everybody. I'm Melanie Bolstad. And I'm Sophia Kripo. And, and you're, you're watching, watching Channel 6, 6 News. <laughs> it's a beautiful afternoon and we're looking at some cold weather. Make sure to wear a jacket. We just got news there's an altercation on 4th Street. Let's go check it out. <laughs> 50 year old man John Malcolm is arguing with a younger boy currently unnamed. Oh, what's this? Another man is stepping up. That's George Robert 12 Hughes. <laughs> Hughes is a shoemaker living in Boston and it seems that he's standing up against loyalist John Malcolm. But that's not all Hughes was known for. Hughes was one of the colonists <laughs> that dressed himself as an Indian and participated in the Boston Tea Party. Malcolm is saying something to Hughes. You're an impertinent rascal and it's none of your business. <laughs> You are a vagabond and should not speak to gentlemen in the street. I am neither a rascal nor a vagabond, and though I am a poor man, I am in good credit in this town, unlike you. Be that as it will, I never was tarred and feathered anyhow. <laughs> Malcolm was overcome by rage and hit Hughes over the head with his large cane, leaving Hughes unconscious. So we know about Hughes. What about Malcolm? In Malcolm's past, he has been tarred and feathered once before today. The first time he encountered tar and feathering was October of 1773 in the town of Falmouth. The reason for this first encounter was Malcolm had seized a ship as a custom officer and yelled at the sailors, threatening to use a sword if they questioned his authority. So the sailors disarmed Malcolm, leaving him with nothing but his clothes, taking his sword, cane, and wig, and poured tar and feathers over his clothes and paraded him down the street for an hour before he was released. What an embarrassment. All of Boston knew about it. And even after they released him, people continued to hoot at him while walking down the streets. Malcolm must be really sensitive on the subject of him getting tarred and feathered. I mean, enough to knock Hughes unconscious. Talking about Hughes, I just got news that he gained consciousness and headed to go see Dr. Warren on Hanover Street. It seems word has gotten out about Malcolm's assault on Hughes, because I also just got news that a not-so-friendly crowd of people are gathering around Malcolm's house right now. As the team makes their way to the scene, let's see what some callers think about the situation. Caller number 74, you are on the air. Here's your question. What do you think will happen to Malcolm after assaulting Hughes? Well, I think he should be tied and fed that again. He definitely needs to get his temper together. Mr. Sniffles thinks he's annoying and that if he doesn't get feathered, I will Thank you for answering. Um, well, it seems that the team has made it to the scene of the crowd. Let's take a look. We're a safe distance away from the crowd and it's getting heated. Let's zoom in. It seems that Malcolm is verbally assaulting the crowd. Oh, how low of him. It seems that he has pulled out a sword and what in the world is he thinking? People are gonna hate him more. Oh dear, he has a pistol now, what? You say I was tarred and feathered and it's not done in a proper manner? Damn you, let me see the man there to do it better. You're disgusting, you're- you viewers on the situation. As Malcolm got escorted out of his house, many huzzahs were heard by the crowd. He was dragged onto a sled to Teen Street, which is the site of the Boston Massacre three years ago, and he was stripped of his clothes. I would say, what a gruesome sight, but I also feel bad because it is the middle of winter. And in front of a crowd, tar and feathers were poured over his bare flesh. <laughs> he was then transferred on a cart and hauled around various areas of town. They hauled him to Liberty Tree, Butcher's Hall, and Charlestown Ferry, and to Copps Hill. And at each of those places, he was flogged, or as some may know it, whipped. After four hours of this, he was left on the doorstep of his house, frostbitten and senseless. I mean, I kind of feel bad about the guy, but he also asked for it. You're right. Let's recap about what happened today. Let's talk about the whole experience we had today. First, we witnessed Malcolm yell at a young boy on 4th Street. 
The boys, unknown for minor safety reasons, also don't forget that Hughes took a huge blow to the head and survived. Probably because he's so thick in the skull. Am very, I right? Very, very funny of you. I'm not sure Hughes is going to appreciate that joke, though. You know he does watch our show. Yes, and he has gained consciousness. Then we dove into a warm and feathery past of John Malcolm and learned about how few enjoy Malcolm's existence. Including Crawler74, who had some very strong opinions on Malcolm. Yes, you're right. Then crowds formed in front of Malcolm's house. Right. When Malcolm was threatening everyone, he got taken out of his own house. Yep, and he was stripped of his clothes and had tar and feathered port all over him. Then he was paraded throughout town, and I even got a picture while at Liberty Tree. Wow, that certainly is something. I also got a picture of a different feathering and tarring, but it is gruesome nonetheless. Anyways, I think that wraps that up. I'm Melody Volstad. And I'm Sophia Kripo. And, and we're, we're signing, signing off. off. I'm, just, I'm literally sliding off. I'm on the floor. Okay, be quiet. I don't care. Think about the situation. <laughs> Even if... <laughs> Shut the... Yeah, I mean, like... It's so I'm being held hostage. No. I'm being held hostage in my own home. <laughs> the script. No, I want it to love me. <laughs> Ayo. <-y> <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> that better be in the bloopers or I'll cry. <laughs> script. We're 30 seconds in. No, we're only 25. Shut up. <laughs>